Well, good morning and good afternoon to the people in the East. Uh, welcome to our Intertribal Ag Council Facebook Live visit today. My name is Carrie Jill Lawrence, Director of Programs, and my co-host today is Latasha Redhouse, and she's the Director of our American Indian Foods Program. We're here today to talk about the 2020 Intertribal Food Summit being held on June 20th, um, with communities reducing in-person gatherings to help curb the spread of COVID-19. This year's Intertribal Food Summit is going to be held virtual. And so you can attend this amazing event without even leaving your desk. <laughs> uh, today we're here with our panelists, uh, Dan Cornelius and Alina Terry. Um, would you all be so kind to introduce yourselves? Yeah, hi, I'm Dan Cornelius. I am the technical assistant specialist <laughs> for the Great Lakes region for the Intertribal Agriculture Council. So we do a lot of work of, um, our, you know, my main job is helping tribes get better access to USDA programs. And we started up doing food summits back in 2012 uh, at Oneida, and then have moved them around the, the Great Lakes region and kind of taking that concept and going national with it and pioneering our first attempt at doing a virtual event. And I'm a member of the Oneida Nation of Wisconsin. Great. Elena, do you want to go ahead and introduce yourself? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think we were staring at each other like, okay. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> Hi, I'm Elena Terry. Uh, I'm a member of the Ho-Chunk Nation from Wisconsin. I am the Food and Culinary Program Coordinator for the Native American Food Sovereignty Alliance, uh, which also includes the Culinary Chef Mentorship Program. And um, I'm also the executive chef and founder of Wild Berries Nonprofit, which is a community outreach that works with seed savers, growers, uh, producers, uh, in indigenous, that uh, also works with community members that are overcoming AODA issues. So uh, that's what I do here in Wisconsin. Great. So I guess we'll dive right into talking about the Food Summit. So Dan, can you Tell us more about the upcoming event. Um, when is it and how can our uh, attendees get linked on and, and attend the, the conference? Yeah, so the main event is on Saturday, June 20th, but we have, um, we're, we're doing other recordings and well, live sessions and activities in the lead up to the event. So starting Monday next week, We've got Linda Black Elk that is um, going to be doing a virtual plant walk. Um, we have then a producer panel on, on Tuesday. Wednesday, we've got Sean Sherman going to be talking about Native and Indigenous foods. We've got a, and then we have a policy panel on, um, on Thursday with our director, Zach Ducheneau. Uh, Indigenous Food and Ag Initiative at Arkansas is going to be joining as well. Um, then for the main event on, um, on Saturday, um, you know, this is where creating, doing a virtual event, it's kind of new territory. And how we're structuring this is we're going to have a series of live roundtables all day starting at nine o'clock mountain time and stretching, uh, stretching through the day. That's going to be complemented with a schedule of we've got pre-recorded sessions on a variety of different topics. Uh, they're going to be going live on YouTube according to a schedule and everything is going to be linked in to a new e-learning platform, Resiliency Through Agriculture e-learning platform that we just launched this week. We've got several more workshops that are going to be released in the next week complementing this event and really uh, providing a resource that will um, that will be continuing to build upon as we move forward. So again, a bit of new territory with um, with doing a, a virtual online event. But if you go to intertribalfoodsummit.com, that's the main event website. We have more information on there. Um, you can find that and, and more information on the main Intertribal Ag Council website. That's indianag.org. And uh, you can check both of the Facebook pages. We do have a couple of other partners. So um, I'll turn it over to Elena and she can talk a bit more about, um, about Native American Food Sovereignty Alliance. All right, so 
With the Native American Food Sovereignty Alliance, we have been working on a wonderful way to have a positive space in leading up to the Virtual Intertribal Food Summit. So we uh, launched the Indigenous Chop Challenge and had such amazing participation. We have offered the winners of the challenge webinar spots uh, for the Intertribal Food Summit, the Virtual Summit. And so you'll be able to learn a little bit more about some of the winners and the work that they're doing in their communities. And then also we'll be having some webinars available from the chef mentors who were the ones posing the challenges for uh, the Indigenous CHOP Challenge. So you'll get to learn a little bit more about uh, Tanya Brandt, Loretta Barrett Odin, Crystal Wapupaw, Brian Yazzi, just to, to name a few of them. And uh, so it's been a wonderful way to interact with each other since we've we're kind of a, a community that loves we we really worked to be able to be together and so having something like the challenge and the virtual intertribal food summit is a way where we can still connect and and make those uh you know network with each other support each other not only the culinarians but also the growers which we've transitioned those challenges into and, uh, and really just be able to have some time together to uh, you know, share knowledge and to not feel quite as isolated as we have been given the circumstances we're in right now. So um, it's a wonderful thing to be involved in. Thank you for you know, having us be a partner with this and including uh, the culinary program as well. Great, thank you for touching on, on those uh on why it's important to attend. Um, can you both maybe touch on who would benefit from attending the virtual conference or summit? Yeah, I think that, um, you know, really this, this event is intended for, you know, it's an intertribal event. So it's, it's intended, it's targeted for our tribal communities and, you know, Food. food ultimately comes from from producers you know whether that's growers whether that's ranchers and stockmen harvesters fishers and um, you know so really all the way from from the producers through um, you know through the households families uh, communities and the idea with this event is sharing some of the success stories of what is going on across Indian agriculture from you know from that production standpoint all the way to policy and then with we, we know with the chefs of looking at value-added production new ideas to use food but really doing it in a way that you know we want skills and knowledge that's going to transfer to the home kitchen you know and um and so really getting that seed or that ranch or seed to table uh, approach that's what we focused on with the past in-person events you know, I know last year we had over 700 attendees at the Great Lakes Summit at Pokagon, and um, you know, I think it just shows the excitement that people have for for food and agriculture right now. And I think that now is as important of time as as any to continue to advance that. So, as Elena had touched on, this is a great opportunity for for people to just come together and network with one another and um, and share ideas. So, you know, that that's one of the other things, and just wanted to quick touch on. Elena has been coordinating the Indigenous Chopped Challenge, but uh, we have a grower challenge open right now, and we have a rancher stockman challenge open as well. So who would benefit? Who should participate? If you're out there growing, if you're out there, you know, if you're, you know, what are you doing for, for selecting, um, you know, when you're, when you're adding uh, new animals into your herd? What are you looking for? How are you managing your range? Uh, what seeds are you growing? These are the type of questions that we have so many innovative producers out there. And this event, we're trying a, a new format with these challenges of, um, you know, get online and, and share what you're doing. And we have some great prizes that are available as, as part of that. That's great. Yeah. And I, I really appreciate, too, the inclusion of the timely program guidance of available um, COVID recovery type programs. So. Well, thank you. Elena? Yeah, I was just going to say, I think anybody could be involved in this. You know, it, there's so many resources out there and so much knowledge. Uh, people willing to share that knowledge in these times when 
but you know, food sovereignty and food initiatives really should be at the forefront of our concerns. And, and what are we going to do not only tomorrow, but you know, five months down the road next year to ensure that our food systems are in place. I think everybody can benefit from participating in this. Uh, I look forward to going to the food summits because there's always so much that I get when I, I attend, you know, things that you would never even imagine information or plants or about processes. And I know that uh, with the Indigenous Seed Keepers Network through NASA, we uh, sent out several hundred packets of seeds. And I know that a lot of people who receive those seeds are first time growers. And this is a wonderful place to get information to support your efforts at home. And also just to connect with each other. Uh, you know, the best resources are, are the ones that are sharing that information. And this is a wonderful way to get to know them a little bit more and to be exposed to some of that on whatever level that you're at. I think that it's a, a wonderful opportunity to participate in. Great, thank you so much. And, and I'm, I'm sad that I don't get to participate in person, but I'm really excited that we all get to connect virtually and still be together um, in the space of, of the Intertribal Food Summit. Um, but how, how have past years been like with the Intertribal Food Summit? And then um, can the audience or current audience uh, take a look at past events? Is there like historical recordings or anything like that, just so they get a gauge of what exactly this event entails? Yeah, that's a, a great question. So, um, you know, so past events, um, yeah, I want to turn it over to Elena in a second here, because I think Elena's got a really powerful story of, um, of attending the event at Meskwaki and kind of, you know, so part of the journey that it's, that it's taken her on. But, um, but for, the, for the more direct answer on that, you can go to intertribalfoodsummit.com, the website for the event. We have past event uh, summaries on there. So you can see a lot of the pictures, the basic descriptions of those events. But then one of the, uh, one of the exciting things is we've, um, we've got one of our folks, Paul Domain, has been spending the past, uh, the past couple of weeks compiling, uh, going through all the archive from our past events and pulling out some of those workshops and, and those and those uh, key clips of um, all the different activities that we've been doing at the past ones so you can get a little bit of a glimpse of uh, of some of those topics and, and we can't all come together in person but um, sharing some of those memories and some of that content from the past events is going to be a part of this event so all of that is being um, is going to be available on the Resiliency Through Ag Agriculture e-learning platform. And you can access that through Mighty Network. Um, there's, you can go through your web browser and, uh, and search for, once you get to Mighty Networks, search for Intertribal Agriculture Council, or you can download the mobile app. So that'll be under traditional food, the traditional foods workshop that we're launching next week. You can get some of that content. And we've got additional content that, uh, that's available as well on that platform. Elena, did you want to talk about some of your um, just perspective and, and that first food summit that you went to at Meskwaki? Sure, I can. So uh, that was the first year that NAFSA had offered the chef mentorship program. And even though I had been a traditional cook and um, had really dedicated a lot of my life to learning about our traditional foods and our food systems. I had a garden at home. And then I had worked in restaurants for over a decade uh, in all aspects. And, um, but I'd never thought to merge the two of them together. And this opportunity came through NAFSA for the chef mentorship program. And I thought, well, I think I should apply as a mentee because I, I am a strong advocate that there's always something that can be learned. And um, since I was kind of new to uh, the Food Sovereignty Initiative. I wanted to make sure that, you know, I, I kind of got a feeling of it. And when I arrived, it, it was such an amazing atmosphere and the community was so supportive. And, um, you know, for me as a chef, being in the kitchen in that kind of an atmosphere, it was amazing to see the support and um, the care and attention that was given to the ingredients which is something that you know, we practiced at home, but I never really did 
in my professional life. So uh, it was a wonderful thing. We continued on. Actually, Chef Tanya Brandt and I went to the East Coast uh, Intertribal Food Summit and then the Southwest Intertribal Food Summit that same year and just expanded our network of uh, chefs and traditional cooks and even just being exposed to so many different foods regionally and that knowledge that I hadn't really been able to receive firsthand, it was an amazing experience. So uh, then when we had the chance to uh, do Pokagon, I accepted the uh, offer to help coordinate the kitchen for uh, the summit, which was an amazing undertaking because like, as you had said, Dan, we had over 700 attendees at uh, the food summit, which was in incredible and there was such positive energy we had over 70 chefs working in the kitchen to feed everybody and i will have to say that taste of the tribes has blown me away where people get to showcase some of their skills and their home flavors um, it's just a wonderful way to interact and so in creating this and in making the pivot that we needed to adjust for the times um, I, I feel like all those resources and everything is able to be put in this place. And it's, it's nice that we'll be able to access it whenever, you know, we need to, once we have it put there. So um, I definitely think that, you know, it's not as, as wonderful as being able to see everybody and, and make those connections with everybody, but we're still able to have this wonderful space available for uh, interaction uh, on behalf of the food sovereignty initiative. So, um, it's, it's been a wonderful journey and now NAFSA has, you know, expanded their program for the chef mentorship and uh, we just closed the applications. I want to say we have around 120 uh, indigenous chefs and traditional cooks involved in the, the program now and when I had first applied, I was one of 44. So uh, in, in a couple of years, our network and our family has grown quite a bit and it's wonderful to watch and witness it all happen. Yeah, thank you so much, Elena. Um, kind of going back and, and to uh, Dan's, um, you kind of touched on the, the challenges. Dan, can you kind of share like the, the, the different challenges coming up or that is taking place right now? You mentioned the growers challenge. I think the youth have a challenge kind of coming up and then um, I don't, I think there might've been with natural, one with natural resources. Um, yeah, we have, so we've got the grower challenge. Um, the, that one is, I, I believe is, uh, is closing on June 17th. So you've got, uh, just a little bit less than a week to, um, to get it in. And, you know, we're trying to keep it flexible. Uh, if you can do a video, that's great, but I know I just see on, on social media, I see all kinds of, um, of great, uh, you know, of great gardens and fields and different approaches that people are taking and doing videos and sharing and, you know, providing a resource for others. And so that was kind of the idea is since we can't all come together, how do we still allow engagement beyond just going and watching some, you know, some recordings and so trying to give people an opportunity to share some of that content. Um, so basic idea, go and uh, tell your story, whether video, take some pictures, uh, provide some context to those pictures if you're gonna take that route. And then, um, and then just hashtag Intertribal Food Summit, hashtag Grower Challenge, and, uh, and send me an email, dan at indianag.org. And you can find this on the, on the website, on the intertribalfoodsummit.com uh, website. Uh, but again, trying to keep it simple, but giving people that opportunity to share what they're doing. And we've got some great prizes on that one. We've got, uh, we've got planting sticks, cooking paddles, and, um, and then actually um, we're going to be donating uh, a batagan or a kaniga. It's a, a corn mortar. So going to be posting that up maybe later today or tomorrow of adding a new prize in on that one. Got a couple extra ones that I made last year. So uh, if you've been looking for one of those butagans, here's your chance to, to get one by entering the grower challenge. Uh, also, if you want to make your own planting stick, we just opened up the sign up for we're doing a, a workshop on, on making planting sticks. We've got a few cooking paddles as well. Uh, check the website on that one. And then for the grower stockman challenge, same basic concept. 
you know, what are you doing that, that that's innovative and that you'd like to share with, with others, you know, so whether that's managing your herd, whether it is um, conservation and, uh, you know, managing your natural resources, um, you know, or whether it's marketing, uh, you know, anything innovative that you're doing. Uh, we've got, um, we've got three $200 uh, gift cards that we're giving out as part of that one. And then the youth challenge is going to be launching uh, possibly later today. Uh, that one is, um, is open until July 5th. And it's basically asking what is food and agriculture doing to help, help your community during this time of, of crisis? Or how, how can it help your community during this time of crisis? So those are the three challenges that we have open right now and kind of building on, on that success that Elena has, um, has, been, um, has been doing with the Indigenous Chopped Challenge. And, and for those producers that are um, listening in that are part of the American Indian Foods Program as well, we want to hear your story. So share that information with Dan, um, how you're navigating these new waters, um, how you're overcoming these different challenges that are coming up during this time and, and also any wins. I know that they're through this, a lot of our producers have maybe switched to direct marketing, anything like that. Like Dan had mentioned, it didn't have, it doesn't have to be um, grower specific. It could be about your your marketing story. So I think those are, would be really interesting to share. Definitely. Vladi, could I add one other thing on on that? Is with our new e learning platform on uh, on that Mighty Networks app, which we've uh, you know part of the hope there is that we want people to be sharing what they're doing. Is you know we've got some different comment uh, threads for the workshops. It's a brand new platform. We're adding new workshops over the next week, but uh, trying to provide more opportunities just to, to be connecting. And, and um, I think we're all stronger of working intertribally and supporting one another. So and we've got the Food Summit next week and on June 20th, but it's all part of a, a much larger, bigger picture effort to, uh, to be sharing those success stories, providing the resources, and, and just working together to support one another. Along with that platform, we're also, we've launched the podcast about two weeks ago. And on that podcast platform, we should have producer, um, producer interviews. Um, we should be launching those soon. And, and that would also go in, um, tie up with the Intertribal Food Summit. So again, these are all, this, all of the different platforms, plus all the amazing partners we have. I feel like um, this is just a special time to really forget about what's going on in the world and just really, really network and, and just celebrate food and, and our, in our ways, our traditional ways. And so I'm, I'm super excited about that. Elena, did you have any, um, anything else to add or closing comments from anybody? Yeah, I would love to say that the Indigenous Chop Challenge, I, all ranges of skills were shown and such a variety of ingredients and and just ideas and in the way that plates were put together it, it was so inspiring on whatever level to see people engaging and so i would encourage you on whatever level you're at as a grower or a producer to share that because there are people out there that are at the same level or you know are inspired by what you're doing even for the work that's being done in the communities and, and the work that's being done by in, indigenous people, like know that it is very inspiring. And the more that you get it out there, the more that other people can, uh, you know, get that inspiration from you or those ideas, or maybe there's something that you thought of that they didn't. And, and so like, don't be intimidated to participate. I, I'm just putting it out there to encourage you to, because there, it's been wonderful and I love watching it. I love seeing uh, all of the submissions for all of these challenges and what people are doing. So um, I hope that I see everybody on June 20th. I hope that you utilize the resources that are out there and, um, and hopefully it'll spark something in you that you can take back to your community or your family and uh, you know, make our food system that much stronger and the possibility and, and of our knowledge not only continuing but expanding and and you know just really coming back the way it has been it's been wonderful so i encourage you to participate and i look forward to seeing everybody then 
Excellent thoughts. Thank you. Um, I have an, I need to go back a little bit. I need to ask about registration. Do we need to register for the summit or how does that work? Yeah, um, we do have a registration. There's no cost for, uh, for tribal community members, staff and partners. Uh, you can go to, to intertribalfoodsummit.com and find the link or you can go, uh, the direct link is uh, intertribalfoodsummit2020.eventbrite.com. Um, again, it's just right on the website, really simple registration, uh, but we'll be, uh, be sending out, we are sending out more information on the speakers on the event through that. So please do register. Again, no cost on that registration. All right. Awesome, thank you. Yeah, we are super excited to present this virtual event really highlighting the overall resiliency of Indian agriculture. And we're gonna be encompassing many aspects of agriculture, including conservation, production, policy, marketing, the culinary, traditional foods, medicine, and, and of course the COVID recovery um, resources out there and how to kind of navigate in some of those programs. So super excited for that. Uh, any other comments? Questions from anybody? No, I, I'm gonna look and see if we have any comments or questions on our live feed, but if you are tuning in, you can submit any questions that we might not have um, covered. Uh, let's see. We do have a really neat comment from Spring Alaska. She's one of our producers and she mentioned that food summits have allowed us producers to provide tribal foods to our chefs and community. Great, great feedback spring. But we just got a lot of hellos and, and howdies and great work, so. <laughs> Yeah, and I yeah, I just wanna just wanna reemphasize if anyone wants to participate, if you have something that you want to share, that's part of the ability with these grower challenges is you can, you know, you can do a, you can share a video. You know, easy thing to do is uh, is you can even just do a slideshow and do your own Zoom recording on that to use that to help to, you know, to to easily make a recording, post it up, and uh, and the winners will be featured as part of the event. So Everybody has a chance if you want to to participate in it and um, stay tuned for more information. We're going to be having a poster coming out later today with uh, with more info on the schedule and um, and the event itself. Perfect. June 20th. Don't forget. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Great. Well, I think that might cover it. Um, we good. <laughs> I yeah, think no, so. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone I know. I was like, okay, we're just gonna sit here and, and joke and pretend. We can visit all Facebook. day. <laughs> yeah, I think so. I think I just like sitting and looking at you guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I feel like I do more work when I actually see pictures or faces of people, so it works out really well. <laughs> yeah. Great. All right, well, thanks everybody. And holler if you have any questions, get a hold of any one of us. And uh, we will talk to you soon. All right.